It's me, Vera, here to remind you that this is an adult podcast. That means we're going to deal with tough topics. Take a break if you need it, and be kind to yourself, because we sure won't be. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Stitch of Fate, a Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition podcast. As always, I am your storyteller, Mike Martin, joined by my four wonderful players, Josh, Bub, Mark, and Dot. Hello, everybody, and welcome back, Bub. It's good to have you back th- uh, this week. Thank we you missed so you. I, uh, I'm, I'm happy to be back. We're excited to see Duke, so I don't have to do his voice anymore. I, <laughs> no, I'm kind of worried. worried. Everybody was looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just masterful. taking over That now. was masterful. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> I'm a little worried voice actor when, right here. When, when I heard that, I was like, ah, oh, oh, shit, my job here is done. I'm no longer <laughs> needed for this cast. Perfect. <laughs> I'm glad I am glad I was. Uh, I can now play Duke forever. Um, yeah, I'm excited to have you back. We're, uh, I, as we were talking off camera, we're almost at the end of the season, which like caught me off guard, so... We're almost there, everybody. I'm excited to see what you guys end up uh, discovering over these next few weeks. But um, uh, before we get going, as always, thank you to everybody over at Patreon for allowing us to produce another season. Uh, season two wouldn't have happened without you guys, and further episodes won't happen without you either. So if you want to support the podcast, head over to the Patreon, check it out. You get some sweet little rewards. Uh, we got Discord rewards and other things, So uh, and it goes all to just keeping the show running. And if you can't do that, but we'll still want to support the show, dropping a review, letting your friends know, letting your family know, the people who are into this kind of thing or or, uh, or into this kind of uh, podcast or show, just let them know and let them check it out. And if they like it, hopefully they'll stick around. Uh, that's the other best way, word of mouth. Other than that, I think, I'm, I think we're good. Is there anything else I missed? Good? Okay, cool. Nope. Uh, other than that, then let's uh, set the scene, rein it in, and see what our coterie is up to. As the scene picks up, Duke steps off that final stairway, having heard Sean speak to the rest of the coterie, allowing, uh, telling them that there's something rather important and worrisome that he feels he has to tell them. And Duke uttered a single line before we cut to that episode. And that's where we pick up again, hearing Duke's voice. Sean, what's the worry? Oh, hey, Duke. I was just telling everyone here. I'm worried we might be getting played again. Because uh, an old friend appeared, caught me just outside the club. Uh, the other afternoon, um... And as the light bounced off his ugly face, I realized that Larson is still very much interested in me. So, um, well, I just thought you should all know that he's still nuts and I'm going to meet up with him again in uh, the coming days. Because... He wants to recruit me to his cult. Good. Good. This is favorable. We can execute some sort of plan with this. Okay, cool. Well, in the heat of the moment, I came up with a plan. I offered him, uh, I, I offered him Kadir. I'm sorry, <clears throat> offered him Kadir. Certainly bold of you. I said I knew where Kadir would be on given days, and because it's partly true. You realize Lying. Kadir is not like a finger food. He is not a sandwich meant to be offered to another. He's the sheriff, after all. Yeah. Well, out of all the people you might want to ambush, he's probably quite low on the list, so uh, it's better than me saying, hey, his duke i don't know but he didn't trust me was the thing he didn't trust me i would never be found in the situation i have a lot of thoughts i don't know mm. which order to put them in okay 
first. Why Kadir? Not for you. I know why you don't like him. What did Larson have to say about Kadir? Uh, was he interested? Yeah, he was interested. Okay. Check for us. Did you tell him that... that Kadir would be here? I said I knew where Kadir would be. Perfect. Okay. We're still doing all right. Where? Where? Are you meeting Larson? Uh, you know that shitty park? Just around the corner? He was hanging outside the club, so I, uh, thought I'd meet him somewhere slightly less conspicuous. He's walking around our domain. In the daylight. It makes sense. It's, it's what I might do if I were in his situation as well. Well, that is a real problem. Max suddenly ripples into view. Hey, Vera, I took care of that. Oh, hey, Sean, what's the rumpus? Sean looks even more nervous for a little bit. <sighs> what? What's wrong? Sean has been in contact with our dear Larson. Found him. Well, that's interesting. He seems to still have a hard on for our dear Sean. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Huh. So, uh, how did this meeting go? Pretty uh, congenial? Surprisingly, given that the first thing I told him was that I killed his, his, uh, his little thin bloods at the club. <laughs> um. Well, I figure he wouldn't miss them too much. You're his favorite. <laughs> He's used to it by now. Yay. So the gist is, uh, he thinks I'm interested in the cult. He wants me to join. He's got all these grand ideas of Thin Bloods being the best and this, like, god of his, like, coming and smiting the evil people. Anyway, uh, he doesn't trust me fully because, you know, of the burning of the club. So I need to get him to trust me if I want to pretend that I'm on his side. What god? Yeah, yeah, whoa, whoa, back up there, like Vera said. What, what god? Something about worms? My eyes dart to Duke. For anybody who would make that, uh, would be interested in being an intelligence occult role. Did he refer to uh, Kindred as the worm? <laughs> something like that. Something, uh, it chose us. Something, something... Uh, it, we, we didn't know about it properly. Like, it, I, I don't think it's like a vampire thing. Yeah, it sounds like some kind of made up bullshit to me. Right. At least considering what I rolled. Yeah, that completely sounds like made up bullshit <laughs> to me. <laughs> I got three okay, successes. Making a roll? I'm not even going to try. Okay. Um, and Sean, did I already have you roll when you were talking to him? I think I did. I don't remember if you did, but okay. I am not going to roll thing, it Duke, either way. The it's only thing that, uh, with three successes, um, while that's that beats a relatively difficult roll, uh, something this kind of obscure is difficult, but you've been doing a lot of research into werewolves. That has come up in pockets of your research, the worm being yeah. some sort of destructive force. It's hard to know exactly what it is with what you've come across. However, within your werewolf studies, that's it's been a, a name that's a popped popped up over the years would it make a difference if i if i uh, re -rolled see, you would be able to reroll two more i mean Ooh. four and five is much larger than three so for sure you put up a four i got four you are under you are the understanding that the worm is some sort of um like mystic being of destruction and uh you wouldn't you wouldn't have any vampire connection to it with with still even with a four but that's what the worm is it's it's to the werewolf some sort of mythical being of destruction and that's what I am aware that they generally what they would refer to kindred worm as, tainted. As you've you've heard of tainted, tainted by the worm, the worm, worm tainted yeah. in 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 the past before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
the worm. And this is something that I've come across in the past. Actually, more recently than not, and it occurs a bit more in the the studies of the lupine. No. They like to think of kindred as worm tainted or worm touched. Uh, again. Or worm food. <laughs> as they'd have us, yes. Okay. Well, that doesn't bode well either. But maybe it gives us a hint into something Larson might be up to. His little <laughs> cult. Short of dismantling authority, what is Larson's purpose with Kadir? Does he have a personal bone to pick with him? Uh, not as far as I know. He, I, I was just trying to think of things that might be useful to him. Get him to trust me. Would Larson think know of something else? Would Larson know of our histories? Would, would um, being a primogen, would he have mm -hmm. access to most of our histories? He'd be in the know. Vera. Mm. If he's seeking Larson, there's a good chance and opportunity that I think that he might seek you similarly due to some of your past with Thin Bloods. If he's attempting to sire his own group and lot, then <laughs> It makes sense why well, he might want to pick you away as well. Well, I'd like to see him try. That being said, Sean, you're doing exactly what we talked about. The only way to bring him down is to infiltrate it from the inside. Yeah, being on the inside of whatever the hell that is, though, is... Sounds really unpleasant. Remember, we talked about you sending others in for this purpose. Yeah, yeah. I haven't, I haven't found that thin blood, by the way. Okay, listen. Uh, I got a proposal. Why don't we just cut to the chase here? If Sean can actually get a meeting with Lars and get face to face with him again, why don't I just go with, and then we take care of the problem? How much sunscreen have you got? Eh. Uh, Gonna be a daytime meet? Who says that he won't meet at night? It's you, after all. We His beaming both. boy. There's no way that he would do that. He's expecting Sean to turn at any point. He's gonna lean where the favor in his cards may fall. Daylight is his best opportunity at sequestering us away from him. I have an idea. Hmm? Do you know what's sneakier than Larson? My stalker. Mm. Vera says very proudly. I say, I put somebody on Larson, somebody that he doesn't know about, unconnected to this kindred lifestyle and politics. Okay. Who says we can't use a kind to track him? I think he doesn't make a very good stalker if you were aware of him henceforth, even giving him services. Wouldn't at that point he just be an acolyte or a servant? Maybe. I don't treat him that way. I let him worship from afar. When Vera says the word kind, you notice Max lets out like a long sort of Ugh. That being said, it is a thought. We need somebody that can track Larson, and we need to, as Sean said, make him trust us. I'm inclined to agree. Maybe something we can simmer on. It would make sense for us to send Max to help nip this in the bud, but I would like to find everyone that might be allied with Larson. Look, if Max has a chance to take Larson's head, I say we do it. Mm, that's not very poetic. Well, not everything can be. No, I think this is important, wouldn't you agree, Max? You yeah. are seeking Gustav, are you not? You bet I am. Well, so... wouldn't you say that Sean has his own issues that he must quell similarly. Fair enough, fair enough. And, uh, you know, 
If I get involved, it's not going to be poetry, but uh, it'll be more like spoken word. There'll be some words spoken. Let's say that. It's my favorite kind of poetry. Uh, in the meantime, Vera, I uh, took care of that thing we were talking about. Oh, great. Wonderful. Uh, I thought maybe I would make a visit to our neighbor and see what I can to do about finding her a more permanent place to stay. Duke, we have a new roommate. Yeah, Duke, I don't know if you got brought up to speed yet. Uh, Stinky's currently staying in the attic up there. Mm. Very well. I mean, look, I know what you're thinking, and no, I don't know if we can trust her, but she looks like she might be getting out from under Gustav's thumb a little bit. She says she don't know where he is. From the looks of things, he just abandoned her. Which was a kind of shitty thing to do, considering she was feeding from him. She's uh, got some dietary restrictions that uh, are a little inconvenient, if you know what I mean. I'm familiar with the sort. We thought maybe a place with other children, a school, would be a more suitable place to house somebody like Stinky. Safe, and off the radar of pretty much everyone. I have no qualms with Stinky being here or there. I've never been concerned with her. She's not my issue nor my problem. Yeah, mine neither. But uh, we figure, yeah, considering the redecorating we were talking about, maybe mm, yes. uh, best if she's not on the premises for that. By the way, things will be moving forward shortly with this. Oh. The Shantry is becoming involved in some of our more prominent concerns, and the casing will be built. Wonderful. Well, we should probably get to moving it quickly. I imagine as the conversation settles, the coterie moves slowly toward the blood room at this point, entering some area of more space and comfort to deal with your dealings. And Duke, as you enter uh, the blood room, you immediately notice within moments the prince's body isn't laying where it once was, and instead you see ketamine spilled out. Duke probably just turns and like brings his fingers together, like tapping, and he looks uh, blinking poignantly. Oh, Duke, I love it when you get flustered. She's fine. We had a little birds and bees lesson with Sean. It required some excess drugs, and we moved her body to a safe place. Yeah, somewhere no. nobody would look. No, I joked about dusting her, but that's not... that's not her. <laughs> um, I, I may have missed some details. At what point are uh, details of fornication and um, opioids brought together um, where is the prince? <laughs> She's behind my dressing screen. Upstairs. Ironic. Interesting. Would you look back there, Duke? Unless I was invited, no. Precisely. Perfect place to hide her. I don't think anyone else is brave enough to even ask. What... Set my mind at ease, please, for a moment. Why is there a vast amount of uh, drugs sprawled across this table? It was a teaching tool. A, a teaching a teaching tool? Yeah, it's not just drugs either. There's a bunch of salt mixed in there, too. Oh, yeah. We had a smidge of a math lesson about how the blood breaks down from generation to generation. And you used... Um, what, is, what is this... Ketamine, horse tranquilizers. Ketamine. Use, you, <laughs> yeah. you know, with most children, they typically use things like macaroni noodles. Interesting choice yes. here. They're basically the same thing for me. Sean is not a child. This is debatable. Although, since I have had that lesson, I do understand that some may consider me childlike because of the uh, dilution Big vocabulary terms, Sean. It's in here. He it's understands dilution, right? This is what happens in the drug world, similarly. 
try to make it go further, correct? More money off less. Which seemed too apropos for our dear Sean, and a necessary need to explain the responsibility of the blood. The birds and the bees. Why? As a cover for telling Sean about how we sire one another and our bloodline thins as we do it. Because I thought it was cheeky and funny. Were you not? And more than likely, informed? Sean never got the birds and the bees talk. Oh. <laughs> Who did you... Was there anyone to provide you proper study? As at that moment, Sean, you realize you were tossed at their doorstep almost immediately after you were discovered. Yeah. I, there's no... There isn't a vampire school, is there? Uh, there is um, much more uh, akin to that if you're a Ventru, but in your case, it sounds like you hit the ground running. Yep. I yep. asked a similar question. Oh yeah, Sean, D didn't you know? We got our own Hogwarts and everything. There's a hat that tells oh my you God. what kind of vampire you're gonna be. It's I great. missed my Look. letter. <laughs> it's, it's delivered by a bat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look folks, I'm uh, I'm gonna go check in on Sninky again. Uh, give me a holler if you need anything, all right? You gonna deliver her letter? Sorry, what? Bat joke, sorry, bye. Oh. Max, she can have anything that is up there in that attic. There should be fresh clothes and things that haven't been touched in years, but they'll be nicer than what Gustav put her in. Sure, sure. Uh, you don't mind if uh, that stuff gets a little slimy, right? Because uh, I don't think you're going to want those clothes back. If she can deal with the thin layer of dust on top of it, she can have it. I'll let her know. Thanks, Vera. And Max uh, ripples out of existence again as he... Because uh, the club is open right now, currently, or... Yep, it's nighttime. It's getting yep, late. It's, it's almost early morning, yeah. so it's probably closing hours shortly, but it's still yeah, running he, right now. He's going to cloak up for the, the trip upstairs, then. You hear the door open and the music pour in for just a moment as uh, Max leaves, leaving the three of you downstairs. Now, beyond our math conversation, we also had to fill Sean in on the fact that he is a walking corpse. Something he was a little unaware of. Well... Sean, now that you've discovered this, the thoughts. Uh, it doesn't really make sense. Like, I feel fine. I, I get it in your case. You changed. No. No, I didn't, Sean. I stayed mostly the same. That's the kicker about the kindred lifestyle. Everyone changes. I didn't. I was this way before I became what I am now. Mm. You read my file, Sean. I did. You saw the details and the things that I was accused of and even admitted to. You can tell that I was unlike most others. I think you're still unlike most others. You might be right. I suppose that's why Vera keeps me around. Either that or I'm just quite great at keeping the books straight. I like his sense of humor. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? I also saw something in there that I don't know if you I don't know if you know. Please alert me. No. You know people taste different, right? And how they feel. Yes, very much so. I'm aware. I can actually sense the blood. What happens when they don't feel? From what angle are you asking? When they're devoid of emotion? Yeah. I, I don't know the answer, but... Mm, seems like a gap, right? I suppose it depends upon the kindred and their method of tasting. I've seen how you imbibe blood at times. It's less than rudimentary from the feeding aspect. What is it like when you inhale or when you smoke? And there's blood involved. That's very different than how I feed. It's definitely a different mood. It's, uh, hazy. Sometimes electric. Others. For me, it tends to matter not. 
I look for a very specific type, and I feed as such, but it seems like you have something very unique, and you're even quite a bit of a bafflement to the Chantry. There's mm, a lot of information shit. that is withheld from us, Sean, specifically about thin bloods. Well, you can ask, and anything I don't know, I'll find other thin bloods for. Well, it sounds rather pedantic, but would you have guessed that at some point you were likely the closest thing to a wizard or a sorcerer short of being a Tremere? <laughs> uh, you should have let me steal her, uh, her fucking you, Please book. do not feed his ego. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. You, I'll show you a thing later. If it comes up, I'll show you a thing later. I've been working on something. And he does like little twinkly wizard fingers at, at Duke. I think it's worth stating that we need to begin amassing ourselves a, a small pyramid of thin bloods. Your power is sort of limitless when there is many of you, and the amount of blood is similarly aware and around. Hmm. Duke, as always, we seem to be on the same page. I have reason to believe that you might be able to wake the prince. Forcibly so, but mm -hmm. you can do that. Why do you think I want you to get some thin bloods? Shit, With well, enough I'm of on you, it. I think we could do something. And if you truly want to save them, what better way than asking them to try to undo what Larson did? Sounds good to me. Fuck that guy. Can I insight that? I want to see if there's... <laughs> yeah, what's yes. insight? Go for it. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to. Um, I'm going to rouse the blood here. Oh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> that, that could be dangerous. Are you, ooh, is Duke hungry? Duke's been hungry. Duke got one. Oh. <sighs> At least it was uh, With one, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do uh, just a charisma persuasion just to get a, a read. Yeah, he, he, he's the same kind of chirpy that he is mm -hmm. when he's being cheeky, so you don't know. Somewhat juvenile and authentic then, sure. <laughs> Makes yeah. sense. <laughs> Does Sean step away from then? Is that, uh, was that a point where Sean was leaving the conversation? Uh, unless he's needed, he's gonna, he's gonna go off and get busy. The night is, is getting is winding down keep that in mind as well sean so if you plan on leaving the daylight will be coming around soon but not that it bothers you but just so you know it's around that time it right. would leave vera and duke alone in the blood room as well however i think vera as sean leaves she simply looks at duke and she says do you think he's going to fuck us over they give you something to gain that it's always on the table he's looking to move upward not outward you think? Sheldon seems like a brash fellow, but he is not stupid. Did you see his face when he was given just a few thousand dollars? I remember when I made my first few thousand dollars. I was never motivated by money. Well, Duke, we can't all be as perfect as you. Very clearly, Vera, I have something to aspire to when looking in your direction, though, at least in that regard. Which begs a question, and I need something of your expertise here. You and... I believe his name is John. Yes, the older gentleman. Yes? You've been... You've been at least aware of him for how long in your relationship? That is a very long story, Duke. Um, I have known of John since he was about 35 or so. And he's upwards 60s, 70s at this point, it seems. He'll be 81. Wow. In a few months. He looks rather good for his age. Hold on. As I only in the asked. background blurred, you see a slow shuffling man <laughs> taking a full minute to cross the hallway. I only ask because I have someone that is very important to me that seems to have stumbled onto my past, or at least 
they believe as such. And they are aware that something of the kindred nature might be about, though they're not quite upon the precipice of such. Do you think you're compromised? I think that it is valuable to keep me where I am, but that I have made him uneasy for a very, very long time, and he's looking for answers. It's my contact, Luther. He's passed me a, a case file, one that has been cold for a long time. It's one of mine, Vera. But I think he's aware. He's very good at patterns. I've been helping him since, well, he was knee high. His father was one that I had met in the first few in the city. I grew quite a liking to him. May I tell you a story? One that parallels your predicament rather well. I'm all ears. I don't talk a lot about my time in New York prior to my siring. It wasn't long. I lived here, I worked here. There was a man. He was our stagehand. We loved each other very much. It was in fact him who drug me from the fire the night this place burned. I watched Aster grab him and throw him into a burning building and lock the door behind him as he drained the life from me on the concrete. It wasn't until many years later I found out that he had a son, a boy named John. He was left with, of course, no wife, nothing. The boy was a simple man. He was locked up state in an asylum. Unnecessarily. Left to society to take care of. They failed him. When I found out, I did not. When I told him who I was, that I loved his father very much, and that I wanted him to serve me, to stay with me. I would take care of him, protect him, assure he had everything that he needed. He did. You're not a very emotional man, Duke. I understand that. There are not many things I've ever heard you say you care about. I believe if you are honest with this... Luther? About your care for his father. It may change his mind. I may call them kind. But there's a reason... That we have to fight in this life. And it's because they have something we do not. I know that you didn't change from life to life. But I lost quite a lot. And I tell you that because I bet your Luther has a lot more in him than you think he does. If you tell him the truth, be vulnerable, Duke. He may surprise you. Take that into consideration, Vera. I realize that there is a lot going on within Luther. There was a lot to be seen in his father. Similarly, Luther is a complicated man. He's dedicated, if not married, entirely to his job. Interestingly enough, I only want to see him succeed but I realize how uncomfortable I might make him just as much as I'd made his father. Thank you, Vera. I don't know if I quelled your concerns, but I hope that it helped in some way. Rarely do you quell my concerns, but you always instill confidence. 
It's the least I can do, considering the fact that we're all living this life. As Vera grandly gestures to the rather empty blood room with ketamine spilled on a nearby bench, she breaks her posture as the conversation rounds to a close, unless there's anything else Duke or Vera would like to say, before the camera will stay with Vera, striding out of the blood room into the concrete hall and quickly up the stairs as the door opens. The music of the club pours forth. It's the only thing we can hear as we follow Vera through the main dance floor, cutting her way through those dancing. They all part as though, uh, uh, the, uh, as though the Red Sea, as she walks directly through them, owning them as much as she owns this club while they're here. Striding her way up the stairs into the VIP lounge, all the way until we see her room again. Past the dressing room, a blinder, a gentle silhouette laying still. Just a moment we see as Vera ponders, standing on the outside of that uh, divider for a few moments, glancing over every few moments, clearly lost in thought. Before, with confidence as always, she strides around it, standing face to face with a intorpor prince. This is behind a dressing curtain, or like a dressing mm -hmm. uh, panel. So I imagine it, there you see like Vera's robe, right? And all of her things back here, all of her very private things back here. Um, not that she was had forgotten the prince was here, but she kind of lets out a sigh, not that she has to. And you see her take her fingernail and she slides it down the seam of the dress she was wearing that night because she stitched into everything every day. Um, and she begins doing her nightly routine. And... Is there music that plays that Vera would play for herself oh. privately away from the club oh. music? Yes. Well, uh, uh, that rare uh, recorder was in fact turned to me, uh, thanks to Duke. So I imagine um, Vera does like click it on. Why not? And just lets the music kind of play. Maybe she runs a bath. Oh, why not? Mm. Um, I imagine there's like a black marble clawfoot tub or something up here. The water um, rushing out is is yeah. dominant. Yet in the background, underneath it, we can still hear the music quietly, setting mood under the rushing waterfall-like sounds. Vera will kind of undress in front of the prince and uh, put her robe on. And as she does, she starts to speak. And she says, "If I, before, you, before Vera speaks, my question to you is, is the prince looking upward? Or is she looking in your direction when she's undressed? Uh, how do you have her laying? Oh, oh, that's a good question. Back here, there might be a bench of some kind. You know, like a short one that you might sit on to put your shoes on or something like that. Uh, so I imagine her body is laid out, but she would be facing forward, right, to see uh, to see Vera. Um, and that's kind of the point, right? Like she does this very ceremonious thing where she undresses and she gets herself prepared for the evening and she lets the prince watch. That, that's, that, was the, that was the important question, is the prince watching. And as Vera slides into the tub, we, the camera is rather close to the back of Vera. All we see is her shoulder blades uh, as it kind of sinks in. It's in focus on all, her shoulder and her hair rolling down her shoulders and out of focus just past, we see the prince. And that's where the camera lingers as we hear Vera begin to speak. You know, I never thought you'd be here now. You always hated me and I couldn't figure out why. She's like scrubbing her toes, like a little brush in her back. We're not so different, you and I. Sired by the Sapat Prince yourself. Tainted from the beginning. But here you are, the Prince of New York City. What makes you so much better than me? Mm -hmm. Is it because you took a knee? I took a knee. I gave everything for the Camarilla. I wonder if I gave things that you don't even know about. When this is done, I want you to know that you're Scourge saved you. Your Scourge is the one who's going to show that you're going to get to walk in the city again.
Though I can't do it without ruining, ruining your reputation. So I'm going to say sorry in advance. While you were just a meat bag to your sire. I was deep undercover for the Camarilla. Living a life and pining over another. You are a very, very lucky little lady that we were so kind to take you in. When all is said and done, I want Larson to get what's coming to him. I want Gustav to get what is coming to him. I imagine Vera stands in the tub and water like splashes everywhere because she has no care in the world. Wet and naked as a jaybird. And as she stands up and the water splashes down, that we then realize as the audience that the record has stopped playing a while ago. Just, it is just yeah, spinning. spinning. And I walk right over to the prince. And I want my name back. I want what I was rightfully deserved and denied all those years ago. My reputation was stained to maintain others. Yours included. Who knows? Maybe you'll stay behind brick for the rest of eternity. But at least you'll know when you get out who to come talk to. <sighs> she like towels off. Then she tosses the towel on the prince to hide her. Right on her face. She goes, right on her face. Yeah. And then she grabs her robe, which is no doubt sheer uh, or yeah, with like velvet trim or something. And she kind of ties herself up in it. And she goes, I'm tired now. I'm tired of looking at you. She walks from behind the dressing curtain and takes to, I'm sure, the bed where she rests through daylight. And as uh, and as, as Vera kind of whips around qu uh, quickly and leaves, and as the robe wishes by the camera, the camera wipes and changes. The sun is up. Vera is unconscious uh, in her bed, torpored, rather, in her bed. And Sean is caught by the camera, quietly making his way up the stairs. You know where she's being kept, Sean. And as you peer into the room, there lies Vera, as she should be as the sun has risen. And just past where she gets dressed, you can see the silhouette of some humanoid figure. Sean uh, respectfully uh, nods to Vera, and then even though he knows that she won't wake up, he still like creeps through her room and to where the uh to, to where the prince is laying and and you see the prince with a towel over her face uh <laughs> lying on a bench nearby uh he he goes over and, and kneels next to her takes the towel off uh and just kind of sticks uh, a cigarette end in his mouth and it's like it seems like we're moving you on, so, uh, well, we want you to owe So he here's one for the road. And he, uh, takes out uh, a needle and pricks his thumb and feeds her his blood. And as we watch the very first drop of blood ooze from his thumb into her slightly open mouth, the camera pans back will fade to black, and we'll pick up next week with whatever ramifications Sean's actions have taken. Hey, it's Sean. Now, I'm sure you've heard Vera say no phones, but if we're going to break a billion followers, then I'm going to need you to do me a little favor. If you could hop onto Twitter and follow us at Pod by Night, that would be mint, and a five-star review on iTunes ain't going to hurt either. And maybe I'll share some of them spicy DMs with you. Cheers, mate.